Hello and welcome to Ellen Ruth Soap. I'm Ellen and today I am making sea salt bars and I'm super excited to do that because I have an awesome fragrance that to me this smells amazing. It's from Crafter's Choice and it's almond milk and sea salt fragrant oil and it smells so good. It smells just like a suntanny day at the ocean side. It's wonderful. Um, I'm not going to use almond milk. I've never soaked with almond milk before, although I know that you can work with nut milks. Um, but I am going to put um, some coconut milk powder into the oils. But the lye solution I'm using is aloe vera juice, organic aloe vera juice, because that's so good for your skin and the sea salt bars are very spa-like. So the sea salt that I'm using is from Costco. Um, this is very inexpensive if you have a Costco membership. And it's uh, pure sea salt, fine grain. It says it's harvested from the pristine waters off of Brazil's northern coast. This sea salt is 100% natural. So that's what the label says. It's good salt and it works perfect in this soap. And I'm gonna use this entire container. This is 30 ounces of sea salt and I'm working with 60 ounce total of oils. Um, my recipe today is 48 ounces of coconut oil. I'm using six ounces of castor, three ounces of cocoa butter, and three ounces of shea butter. So that are the oils that I'm using. I'm using 8.2 ounces of lye and 19.3 ounces of organic aloe vera juice. So that is the recipe I'm using. And then to that, the additives will be, um, I'm going to do split the batch. In half of it, I'm gonna do about a teaspoon or so of kale and clay. And the other half from Nature's Garden, I'm gonna do about a, a little rounded teaspoon of this red Moroccan clay. And that'll be my color swirl. And then of course I'll add the coconut milk in there. To my lye solution, I did put Tussa silk fibers in there just because I really like how that feels. I've kept it out of a few soaps if I want them to be vegan because silk fibers are not vegan. But I really love how it makes the soap lather. So, or how the lather feels, it's just, it's silky. So I put that in the aloe vera juice lye solution, got everything pulled together. I'm gonna to use little flour molds today because um, sea salt soap can be hard to cut. It's, you can cut it, but you have to watch it like a hawk as it goes through gel phase and cut it before it gets too hard. These bars get rock hard, which is awesome. They last a really long time. But anyway, I'm gonna use soap, little soap molds that takes care of the cutting issue. And I got these fun little tart molds off Amazon and I thought they were so pretty. They're a little bit shallow, but I think they'll make really cute little guest soaps. So if I have extra batter, after I pour out all the flour molds, I might pour some in here. We'll see how it goes. But uh, I'm gonna get everything pulled together. I've got my apron on, I'm gonna get my safety gloves on and we will come back and make some sea salt bars. So what I'm gonna do to my oils here, I have them all melted and cooled down, is I'm gonna go ahead and add my fragrance and my coconut milk powder because I want that, of course, in everything. And then after I split, I will add my kale and clay, which I buy in bulk, so I have it in this huge thing because I use it a lot. And then my red Moroccan clay. Oh, this scent is fabo, I love it. So I'm gonna go ahead and add that right into my oils here. And here's my coconut milk powder. And I'm just gonna add a couple of heaping teaspoons here just to give it a little creaminess, especially because the scent has a milky kind of overtone to it. All right, that'll be good. And this coconut milk powder smells like coconut milk, which I think kind of goes with the whole beachy theme. All right, so I'm gonna pull my stick blender out when I add the lye and I will hand stir for a while and we'll stick blend as we need it. There, I've got my whisk. So here is my cooled aloe vera with Tussa Silk Lye Solution. I'll go ahead and pour that in here. And after I get that um, completely emulsified and blended in before we hit trace, I'll go ahead and get the salt in. Or maybe just a very light trace. But we wanna make sure that 
you hit emulsion, which is when all of the lye solution has incorporated around all of the oil. You definitely don't want any oil pockets or lye pockets in your soap. So getting it blended well is very important. Oh my goodness, I wish I had smell-o-vision. I, well, not everybody likes the same scents, but this one is my cup of tea, I tell you what. <laughs> that scent is divine for me. It's very interesting. I do a craft show on Tuesdays downtown Nashville, and um, you know, people are very, very particular about their scents. It's just all over the place. What some people love, some other people just hate, and uh, so I try to have a little something for everyone. I can't just always do what I like, you know. <laughs> all right, so I think that's blended in very well, so I am going to go ahead now and add this entire jar of sea salt into my soap. And I will hand mix it for a bit here. I might need to stick blend just to get it really incorporated if there's any lumps. So th the neat thing about salt bars is they're, they're heavy. Um, because of the salt, salt is really heavy, and so each bar weighs a good, you know, they're solid, and they are so hard after cure um, and they last a really long time, especially if you let them dry out in between uses, like all handmade soaps, um, homemade soaps, because they have all the natural moisture in there. Like commercial soaps, pull it all out and then add a little back in and tell you it's moisturizing. Well, handmade soaps have all the natural moisturizers and humectants, and so um, it's very good for your skin, but they can get gooey if you let them get stay wet in between uses, so it's really important to let your soap air out and dry off, have a draining soap dish of some kind in between uses. So if you do that with a salt bar, let me tell you, it's gonna last a good long while. You'll enjoy it for a good while. All right, so got the salt all mixed in here. We're still nice and fluid. I think I'm going to go ahead and split off so that I can do my Moroccan clay and my kale and clay. So I'm at about three liters on the side. I love these short form um, poly buckets. They have the measurements on the side. So I'm going to go for about one and a half on each of these. And it doesn't have to be precise, but you know, I'd like to even split as close as I can get. All right, I think we've got that. I'll go ahead and pour off into my other one here. And there we go, it's about one and a half. And we will see here. Oh, actually got a little more over there. Oh. I'm gonna pour a little bit back. There we go, all right. Now, add my kale and clay here. I'm just gonna do a nice rounded teaspoon of kale and clay and a nice rounded teaspoon of my red Moroccan clay. And we'll get those stirred in and if they're still liquidy, I'll probably go ahead and stick blend just a sec to uh, Make sure it's incorporated really well. Actually, let me use my whisk over here. There we go. And because I'm using these little um, molds, I'm going to um, do an in-the-pot swirl so that I don't have to double pour. I've done double pours before and that's fine, but I like in the pot swirls anyway, and you get a really nice random swirly look in each bar. This actually turned a little yellow. I think the um, fragrance oil has a yellow tint to it, which is fine with me, but um, the white kale and clay is not like titanium dioxide. It's not making it lighter. I'm gonna pull that out. Whisk this just a tad more. We are nice and fluid, which makes me very happy. I think that I am going to skip the stick blending and go ahead and do my in-the-pot swirl here. 
and then we'll get to pouring into our little molds. So I'm just going to swirl it around in here. We're very liquidy, but that's okay. There we go. Now see, I've got to switch hands again because I am so right-handed. <laughs> oh my goodness. Have you ever done where you try to uh, write your name with the opposite hand than, than you write with, whether you're left-handed or right-handed? I am. Um, my handwriting with my left hand is like worse than a preschooler. It's, it's pretty rough. All right. Now let me get my little molds over. I've got a bunch of extra molds sitting off to the side here in case I need them and my little tarts and we will just start pouring. And I'm back the next morning, and I probably didn't even need to wait that long. These were really hard, just a few hours after I poured them, but I had a busy evening. So I'm back the next day here to unmold these, and we'll see how our little salt soaps came out. I don't know if the swirls are going to stand out very much between the two color, the clays, the but... That's a very pretty, very smooth bar. So cute. I love these little flower molds. So I'll try and do like one of each here for you. Here's the little rose. Those are pretty. Let me see. Oh, I'll do a tart one. I've never unmolded these. These molds are a little bit stiffer, but I think it'll come out. Oh yeah, that's cool. I kind of love these. They're smaller, but it's a great little guest soap. 